Hey, g'day big bikers. Well, I'm sitting here with uh, Neil and Chris. We're going to have a bit of a chat about the 790. Uh, we've spent, um, what, about 1,500 kilometres in the last couple of days getting to know the new KTM. Um, Neil is a BMW GSA owner, as you know, Charlene, but he also owns a KTM 690 uh, and has um, a really good perspective as an owner of, of that kind of bike. How many KTMs have you got? Mm, three plus this one. Three plus this one. <laughs> but also has uh, just sold his, his Africa Swin DCT to to get onto this uh, 790 or make room probably more than anything else. So uh, obviously I'm a bit of a Honda tragic. The idea here is that we've all got a different perspective and I suppose at the end of the ride that we've just been on, the thing that stands out is it, it's a really, really good bike. KDM have done a great job with this thing. You know, my opinion is it's a big 690. Really, isn't it? Yeah, that, that, that's me. I, I think, it, you know, but I love the technology, the user interface. So just tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, uh, look, it's like a modern car. You can change your music. You can have instructions on the screen. There's nine levels of traction control. So you've got your phone and your Bluetooth headset yep. connected to... Paired to the bike. To, yeah. Yeah. Separately. Separately. Yeah, yeah. pretty cool. So, it's uh, the only downside with that much technology being on your screen is you can get a little focused on your screen. Well, what's going on down there? You know, luckily you can change traction control really quickly. You don't even have to look down for that because that's probably what you change more than anything else. But off road, it's got to be an off road ABS. Yeah. Otherwise, you touch the back brake and nothing happens. Yeah. Um, so you do have to change settings if you're doing like we've done yep. lately. Yep. Um, so just, just you know, back up a touch, why the 790? You've been after this one for a couple of years. I bought the Africa Twin when I wanted the 790 because they said it wouldn't be out for a while. Right. So I've got a 640 KTM, yep. which is a lot more fun on the technical and single track and dirt roads than yep. the Africa Twin. The Africa Twin would blow through its suspension. Yeah. So I wanted something that was in between the two of those. I looked at a 690 with a raid kit, with a bigger tech, with the fairing and everything, but it just wouldn't have given me the ability to do the miles. Yeah, we, we've yeah. got to do road miles to get to where we do. You've, you've got to do where we are, at least 500 kilometers. Yeah. Just to get to the start point. To get to the good stuff. Yeah. To get to the good stuff. Like I the mean, last you few days. You stitch some dirt together, but, but yeah. you still got to do 500 kilometers yeah. And yeah. of dirt roads or, or, or sealed roads. Yeah. And you, you can go around Australia on a posty bike, but you know, you, you've got to have something that that Why? <laughs> suits you, yeah. and that suits me. It's yeah. exactly between my 640 and the Africa Twin. Yep, yeah. it's That's got the handling of the 640. Yep, yeah. lighter weight, like I picked it up yesterday. And, and, you know, I would not have wanted to insert footage. Do that <laughs> with the Africa Twin. I would have damaged something as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. It's got motocross plastics on it. Yep, uh, the guards down the bottom are sacrificial. If you do have a bingle. Yep. You, and you've you know, taken the plastics off around the back as well. You like oh, the, yeah. the look of it? It's a bit, bit well, they're, they're superfluous for the ride that yep. we did, and I couldn't get straps on for the bags right. without taking them off. So, so the toolkit that normally goes in the side, you've it's under, it under the seat. Under the seat. Yep. So, yep. You know, um, so it's very, very easy to change the air filter, like literally and, and, two, and two and screws my, and my air filter point, pulls out. My point with the KTM 790 that they've done is... The design of it is fantastic. It's purpose, purpose built. Seat comes off, two bolts, air filters out. Not like on the Africa Twin or the the GSA. You, you, you're stripping panels off, and it you know it's just an absolute nightmare to get just to an easily serviceable item like like the air filter. Yeah. So really, really good technology. Low tanks on that. Yeah. The center of gravity is way lower. They don't impede. Very, very. Not very the road. They don't get the road like the heads on a on a on, on a GSA on a BMW. Do they? I, I haven't kicked the tanks. No. Yeah. No. No, and I don't think. I will. But uh, they're also V'd down the bottom. Yep. So even yesterday in that yeah, tighter so little track that I was going up, which had rocks and yep. and stuff around it, which uh, you know could yep. be a, could be a problem. But it wasn't a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Now your first ride, you were pretty impressed. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, this is it. The flagship, the KTM 790 Adventure R. Let's take it for a ride. I've got a 690 at home. And this thing's 
quite similar in the handlebars. Got a fancy dash on it. So Wow. This could be a whole lot of fun one of these things. The problem is you might not have your license for long. It feels real good. But that's so much, it is, like Chris says, between the 690 and an Africa Twin, it's, it's um, right in the middle there. And I guess anything is going to be light compared to my 1200. Yeah, your first ride, you were pretty impressed. Oh, yeah. The engine's very smooth compared to the single cylinder, obviously. Yeah. And um, suspension, the seating position, the seat, yep. the foot pegs. The ergonomics, yeah. Um, the foot brake, brake pedal and all that. Yeah. And you've probably got your set for your motocross boots, a little bit with gear shifter, but... Um, Took you a little bit to relearn how to use a clutch and gear lever though. Yeah. <laughs> After the yeah. DCT. <laughs> I did pull up once or twice and nearly stole it and had to grab the clutch. Get a bit lazy. Yeah. And even even the gearbox, the transmission on it is quick it's, shifter up it's and down. pretty positive. Yeah. Yeah. Or I find my six ninety sometimes it's good, but sometimes you don't always get yeah. Notching. What you're asking for sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But man, what a package they're unreal. That yeah. is just a total it's a weapon. I mean it's a lot of money, but it's a it, it's actually fit and finish is really good. <coughs> Got a lot of technology. Well, it's well designed. I don't think you've got to do as much to it. No, well that's the other thing So too. It, it's pretty well equipped. I mean you buy an eighteen thousand dollar African twin, you're still gonna spend five grand on it to set it up for, for touring, you know. If, so if you wanted to make it into a no. proper off road yeah. touring weapon yeah. Yeah. and did a, a shotgun and suspension fork up, upgrade. Yeah. 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 This, this thing is exactly that. It's an Africa twin that's lost 40 kilos and had the five or eight grand spent on suspension to make yeah. it next level suspension. Yeah. The, the suspension's the biggest thing for me. Yeah. You know. Yeah, no, it rides really well. I've, I've got the rubber ring on that tells you how much suspension you use and yeah. even staging the jump and stuff yesterday, there's still about 20 or 30 mils yeah. left to go. Yeah. You know, so. Look, decent set of tyres and uh, you'll take that anyway. Yeah, I wasn't going to comment on the tyres. The tyres are terrible. <laughs> They've got no no sideways um, yeah. cuts in them, so they just move sideways. The front is actually worse than the back. Really random. You used to be riding along the front. Yeah. Was, yeah, terrible. And they're absolutely diabolical on wet yeah. roads, and we're yeah. going to get rain on the way home. Yeah. So. Look, we um, we had a, a really good ride. Uh, I think I think the. The initial impression of the 790 is that it's a really, really good bike. It's fast, like really fast. I know, it's quick. It, it, you get it up over four and a half thousand or four thousand RPM, and it, it's gone. It just, it's even, even on our big bikes, it was hard, hard to, to keep in touch with it. But you know, you kind of got up to about 180 kilometres now on a closed circuit. Uh, under safety, private controlled road. conditions, private roads. Uh, once we got over 180, we were able to catch an overtake, no problem at all. <laughs> But it was a really, it was a, it's a great, great bike. As a, as a, f for me personally, like I'm a big guy, uh, I actually found the ergonomics were a bit cramped. But you can change all that. I had to change that on the Africa Twin. You know, I had to change the ergonomics on the Africa Twin. But I think in general, I, I, like, I, whilst I like it, I actually found it more like a 690 than a, a, a big Africa Twin. That, that, that's how I felt though. I know, I wanted felt something closer yeah, to the absolutely, 690. Because you're, you're, yeah. you're a lot smaller. Yeah, I'm smaller. But I also like the fact you can move forward and back yeah. on the seat yeah. and get into a comfy position. Yeah. Like, I didn't bring my air hawk seat Just because I wanted to see what it was like for yeah. three days riding it without. Yeah. And i got to say, yesterday I wasn't meerkatting and standing up and resting my butt as much as yeah. before, after you guys softened the seat a little bit for me. <laughs> I think um, I think I did about fifty k's on it. I found yeah. it was fine. Yeah. You know, you yeah. probably did about the same on it. The but seat, I well, yeah. I mean, it's get comfortable. Really. Up, up yeah. from the six ninety seat, what uh, do you or, think? or getting off the BMW. Well, I geared mine down one two. Yeah, on be, the front. because I I am setting it up more for off road than 
the road. Yep. And you know, bikes find their own comfortable pace. If I'm not looking at the speedo and I'm on the road, the comfortable pace, like I look down a lot of the time and my speedo is about five or six k's out and it was reading 111, 112 yep. kilometers an hour. That's just where it likes yep. to sit. It yep. felt comfortable. Yep. But weirdly, on the dirt, every time I did exactly the same thing, I looked down, I was doing 122, <laughs> 124. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is actually more comfortable on the dirt yeah. where it's soaking up a, a bit of a bump and you come around in a corner and you accelerate and you just find your natural pace. Yeah. And I look down, I'm going, I'm going faster here than I do on Tars Hill. Yeah. You know, just, just naturally, that's where it was. I think sit. comfortable at speed. For, for me, when I got off that and back on to Mrs. Jones, the, the first noticeable thing, we came into the first corner, a bit of a bit of a hard ride and and I'm actually working a lot harder to pull up the African twin because of that extra 40-50 kilos and that extra mass going into the corner. I mean did it okay and I'm used to it but it, it, it's just ah. nowhere near as nimble as a 7 When I got on your bike yeah. and I know African twins very well, I've just done 40,000 kilometres on mine, I really felt the bulk yep. up high. Yep. You know it actually took a lot more effort to get it on the, yeah. on the wheels off the side stand and then cornering, I, I, I felt I was turning the top heavy part of the bike, yeah. whereas the weight on this one is all down low. Yeah. Yeah. And just talking about the tanks on that, um, we pushed the boundaries of fuel economy. So I had to use a bladder because I've only got 18.5 litres. You've got 20 on that. But interestingly, his fuel economy was 4.7. We were both on big bikes running 5, 5, 5, 6, 5, 7 litres per 100k. Um, so you easily did 400 kilometres. Easy. Uh, on, on the 20 litres that came with that. So yeah. time, time will tell, you know, as, as we move forward and you start putting some Ks on well, that. It should loosen up a little bit and get slightly better economy. It should. Uh, but oh, it, but, but range is a range is Range, range is the sort of riding we're yeah. doing is, is a thing. So this know. has got about 100 Ks less than yours. Oh, I can do 500 comfortably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and this will do 400 yeah. comfortably. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's probably be interesting with um, with the load, is on when, when we do the yeah, 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 yeah. And see how it goes. I yeah. think I think it will still be a much better option than a six ninety yeah. or a DR or yeah. you know, yeah. any yeah. single yeah. cylinder yeah. Yeah. for those. And you can still have some fun with all your gear on it. Yep. Um, but yeah, I, I really am impressed actually with the engine, especially yeah. how smooth yeah. it is. Yeah. Oh, look, it, it's working. Like you know, it's it's a high stress engine. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, I think oh, yeah, you've like, got to it. it it'll, it'll be interesting to see over time how well they last um you know the, the hondas are the hondas are traditionally over engineered they they don't put them in such a high stress situation so it's going to be interesting watching this over time isn't it hmm. just as as we continue on making videos and riding together it'll just be interesting to see the progression of the of the kdm 790 yeah um, i'll, I'll be interested at, at the first major service when they do the valves to yeah. see what the state of that is because yeah. the africa twin was all within spec at the 24,000 Ks, yeah. you know, I yeah. pulled that apart myself. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, I don't know. You know, KTM make a good bike. I mean, this one's got a little bit more torque than the road-based engine, but it doesn't have as much torque down low as the Africa Twin. No, no. But it's and not you thousand. notice that straight away, don't you? It's not a 1,000. No, 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 that's right. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, the Africa Twin just got grunt yeah. straight off the bottom end. This one, you've got to wind it up a little bit. It still goes. Oh, pretty right. quick at the low end, but you know, but, like the, the 690s are like that, too. yeah. They've got yeah. no mass, yeah. have they? Like, yeah. So, yeah, there's not as much flywheel, yeah. 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 Anyway, hope that helps. If you're looking at a 790, um, certainly a very, very good bike. Uh, we're not, we're not endorsing you spend any money on KTM. I would probably buy one if I had the money, though. <laughs> and then maybe oh. if anyone out there wants to sponsor. <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. I mean, if someone wants to give BBA a 790 for a couple of months to uh, to really get used to it, then, you know, we'd be happy to take that on. L like any KTM, it's good. Good off-road performance. got a great engine. It's it's good suspension, good brakes. It handles well. It's durable. It's got full, you know, um, good fuel economy, good technology. Like, it's a, it's a well-built bike, and time's going to tell whether or not it's actually going to be, uh, like, the groundbreaker like the Africa Twin Wars or even the GSA was in its day, you know, is, is this going to be the next groundbreaker? Oh, I in think the it'll invention? be a new segment. I think it'll be... Uh, it's the one everyone will be chasing in a few years. Right? In, in between a big single and the Africa Twin, yeah. and I think they even, nailed it. Absolutely even, even nailed it. GS, just a regular GS. Yeah. Um, you know, that does everything. A little bit, more, probably the GS would be more comfortable for the long haul, but... Yeah. 
you could still, I, I, you know, you could ride that thing to work every day. And, I do. And um, probably lose your license. <laughs> <laughs> oh, easy. You, you have to turn um, it down. We haven't even had the throttle in yeah. the aggressive throttle mode. I, I was going to give it to these guys in rally mode, you know, which is pretty wild on the throttle. But I, I did, uh, gave them in street mode. Um, in off-road mode, it's pretty flat. Nothing much happens. But, uh, yeah, street mode off-road is actually pretty good on the throttle. So You've got a lot of options with adjustability. And the thing, the thing I like about it, too, is the fact that when you turn it off, all your settings you had previously come straight back up. The 690, you got to have a dongle for your ABS. Yeah, and a lot of the remember. other bikes, you got to have a lot of the other yeah. KTM's got to have a dongle. Uh, it just, it's in whatever you left it in. Yeah, yeah. just uh, done the dongle for you. Mm. Yeah. All right, thanks, guys. Um, cool. We've got a bit of riding to do to get home, so um, take it easy. Cheers, yeah.